In this video, we'll be going over how to calculate the three most common measures of stock performance in Excel, the Sharpe ratio, the Traynor ratio, and Jensen's alpha. And it's a lot easier than you'd expect, so stick with me. In order to calculate Sharpe ratio, we first need price data. And in order to do that, you can go to Yahoo Finance, and I'm using SPY as our proxy for the S&P 500 index. And so this is just the largest S&P 500 ETF. So you can just go to Yahoo Finance, type SPY, hit this historical data tab. And in this video, I'm using 10 years of data, so I'll just change that to uh, 10 years uh, previous to today, hit apply, and then we'll have 10 years of price data, and I'll hit download. And when you do that, you can pull up this Excel file with the 10 years of data, and I just grab the adjusted closed stock prices. So here you can see we have the adjusted closed stock prices for the last 10 years for both S&P 500 index or the SPY uh, ETF, and then the Intel stock price. So we're going to compare Intel stock price performance over the last 10 years with the S&P 500 performance to see if Intel would have been a good stock to have held for the last 10 years relative to the market. And in order to find that out, we need to find the price changes for both on a daily basis for the last 10 years. So we'll just do equals the price of the stock one day minus the price of the previous day divided by the price of the previous day. Then I'll control C on my keyboard, um, control down arrow, and then control shift up arrow, and then control V to paste all of the values. And then we can do the same thing with Intel. We'll just take that price of one day minus the previous day, divide by the previous day, and that gives us the stock's return on that day. And we'll just go control down arrow, control shift up arrow, and then control V. So now we have 10 years worth of price changes for both the SPY and Intel. Now we wanna calculate Sharp Ratio, which is really the most common measure of stock price performance or stock portfolio performance. And in order to do that, we need a risk-free rate. So one thing we could do is we could go find the average, let's say 10 year treasury for the last 10 years and use that rate, but I'm just gonna approximate it by saying 1.5% to make it simpler on us. And then we need to find the annual return for both of these stocks, which will just be equal to the last price, so I'm doing control uh, down arrow on my keyboard, divided by the, uh, the first price of both of them, and then to the power of one divided by the number of years. So this is a 10 year period, so we'll just take that uh, value to the power of one over 10. So we find that our annual return for the S&P 500 index is about 13.62% for the last 10 years. And then for Intel, it's about 7.96%. So already Intel's not looking at as appealing because it has a lower return, but it could save itself by having less risk, right? So we're gonna calculate annual standard deviation for both, and we prefer a lower annual standard deviation because we prefer less risk. Okay, so let's do equals standard deviation dot P, and we'll use P instead of S, that's population, because there's so many, there's so many uh, observations in this sample, really is truly more of a, uh, population and then we'll multiply that by uh, 252 so the number of trading days in the year to the power of 0.5 so taking it to the power of 0.5 is just a shorthand way to do square root so we'll take the square root of 252 and so we find that the sharp ratio the annualized or sorry the annualized standard deviation for the S&P 500 index or SPY the ETF is 0.164. We can copy that and paste it with control V over here and find that the annual standard deviation of Intel is 0.296. So now we have everything we need to calculate Sharpe ratio, which I've put the formula for right here. So it's equal to the risk of the or the return of the portfolio minus the risk free rate divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio. And so we find that we have a sharp ratio of 0.737 for the S&P 500 index and a sharp ratio of 2 point or 0.218 for Intel. So we much prefer S&P 500 over Intel over the last 10 years because not only does it have a higher annual return, but it has a lower risk. So the best of both worlds truly. The Traynor ratio is almost identical to the Sharp ratio, but there's one major difference. Instead of dividing by the annual standard deviation as we did in the Sharp ratio, 
we're actually going to divide by the portfolio's beta or the stock's beta. So let's just go over how to calculate that and it's actually really simple. So to calculate Intel's beta, we're just gonna do equals slope and then the known y's, so y's the dependent variable, we're going to just select this whole range of the Intel price changes. And then for the known x's, so you can see right here, the formula says known x's, we're gonna just select the whole range of the market's price changes, which is the S&P 500 index. And this actually tells us how is this portfolio in some ways moving with the market, right? And for a higher beta, there's supposed to be higher risk and a higher expected return. So then we can also calculate the beta for the market. I'm just gonna copy that whole formula there and then paste it here. But for the, the market's beta, it would actually just move with itself. So it would just be the same two ranges, right? So the market stock prices changes selected twice. And then the beta will actually be one for the market. So now we can calculate the train or ratio for both of them, which will just be equal to the return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate. Like I said, it's the same numerator as the sharp ratio, but now we're dividing by beta. So the S&P 500 index has a train or ratio of 0.121, but Intel has a train or ratio of 0.055. And same with the Sharpe ratio, a higher train or ratio is better. So again, we prefer the S&P 500 index for that period of time based on risk adjusted returns. And now we've reached our final risk adjusted performance metric, Jensen's alpha, which is just equal to the return on the portfolio minus the risk free rate plus the beta of the portfolio multiplied by the return on the market minus the risk free rate. And so if our Jensen's alpha is above zero, then that means that in that period of time, this would have been a good investment and we achieved a return higher than would have been expected based on the risk of the investment. And if it's negative, that means that it was actually a, a bad investment based on the risk that we took. And so the return on the market is just gonna be equal to the return of the S&P 500 index over that period of time. And then now we can calculate Jensen's alpha. And first, we'll just calculate it for S&P 500 index, which is going to be equal to the return on that portfolio minus the risk-free rate plus the beta of that portfolio multiplied by the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. And for the S&P 500 index, you'll see that Jensen's alpha should be zero because this is the market. It will not, it will not be above or below expectations. But now we can actually, we can take this formula and paste it over to Intel. And we see that Intel had a negative Jensen's alpha of about 8%. So this tells us that we had, if we would have invested in Intel for that 10 year period, it would have been about 8% below what we should have expected based on the risk that we were taking on the annual returns. Now, if you'd like to play with these spreadsheets, check the automatic download link in the description. And one thing you could do is if you want, really wanted to see how a portfolio performs, instead of using Intel stock prices here, you could use the um, weighted average of a number of different stocks that, that make up a portfolio. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.